Hello fellow human, hope you guys have a fantastic day and let's read some r slash I don't work your lady stories to the first one. Didn't get arrested because the officer thought I did work there. This happened about 6 years ago, right before my old car gave up the ghost. The turn signal knob had gotten caught on my coat about a week prior to this and had snapped completely off, sadly taking it with my ability to turn on my headlights. I was leaving my job that night and had been parked up at the road. As I had needed to do for the previous week, I brought a pair of needle nose pliers with me so that I could jam them in the steering column where the turn signal knob used to be and manually turn on the headlights. As luck would have it, I had a bit trouble getting them on that night but managed to turn them on right as a police cruiser drove past me on the road. He must have seen my butt half hanging out of the car, jamming something into the steering column because as he rounded the corner and went out of sight, I saw reflections of red and blue lights flashing in the trees. Not putting two and two together, I hopped all the way in and got buckled up and shut the door. Next thing I know, I saw the same car go whoosh past me at top speed in the opposite direction. As I get out of the car, the cop comes flying up to the parking lot and locks it up right behind my car. Then he rolls the window down, squints at me and says, Oh, I guess you work here, huh? And then he backs out and leaves. It wasn't until I went into the gas station that I realized he thought I was stealing that car. But when he saw me in my khaki slacks and a red polo shirt dressed exactly the cashier was, he figured nobody would steal a car to drive to work. I almost got arrested, but I was saved because I didn't work there. But I looked like I did. To be fair, if I got pulled over because a cop thought I was stealing a car, my insurance and the registration both say that the car is in my name. The second story. I speak English, but I don't work here. I'm a falconer, and I train birds of prey to flush unwanted birds from places for living. My work often brings me to extremely fancy resorts as this tends to be a bit of bougie service. On this particular day, I was working at a 5-star resort, only millionaires and a billionaire stays here so people tend to be entitled, keeping pigeons from their restaurant patio. I don't have a uniform but I usually dress in nice hiking attire and all the restaurant employees wear clearly marked uniforms with aprons and name tags. I had my phone plugged in behind the hostess podium so I went in to check on it, hawk in hand. While I was responding to a text, presumably rich white lady approaches me and says, And there will be other people joining my party, so you can just... I start to cut her off by waving a hand and shaking my head, but before I can indicate that she's talking to the wrong person, she responds with, Oh, you don't speak English, as she rolls her eyes. You should know that I'm half Filipino and half white, giving me an ambiguously ethnic look, although I grew up in Southern California and Central Florida. Taken aback by this, I accidentally jerked my hawk back causing him to flash his wings. This startled the rich white lady and said, Actually, I speak plenty of English, but I don't work here, lady. You'd think the big hawk on my glove would give that away. She was unfazed and continued on her way, but her two teenage daughters were absolutely mortified. It turned out to be the funniest thing to happen to me all month. Well, at least her kids had the sense to be embarrassed. The third story. Come pick me up. I'm not a taxi, miss. So just a short story just happened to me right now. I'm self-employed, although I do on occasions work on a car wash site, but that is just voluntary work to help out my dad. And today I'm working for myself just on my way to my first job when I got a phone call. A private number. Not unusual for me, but I do work for a lot of businesses. So, naturally, I answer the phone and the conversation goes something exactly like this. Hello, it's ABCDF. I was wondering, where are you? Oh, uh, ABCDEF? I'm sorry, I don't do any work for you or your company. There's a long pause before a siren pitch scream comes down the line. You were meant to be here an hour ago to pick me up and take me to work. Where the duck are you? I cleared my throat. Uh, ma'am, I don't know you. Why would I pick you up and take you? She cuts me off. Of course you don't know me. You're a taxi driver. Now get over to my address, 123 Made Up Street, and get me to work. I'm already late because of you. Miss, I'm sorry, but I'm not a taxi driver and I have no idea what that street even is. I don't even know if it's even in the same city as me. And she signs the longest signs you could possibly imagine. 
I'll just pick me up. And she hangs up. About five minutes pass, and I'm still wondering what the hell just happened when I get a text message. I'm sorry about my wife yelling at you. She dialed the wrong number off by one digit. Sorry, pal. Oh, and for those wondering, it turns out from where I live and where she lives, well, it's a four-hour drive distance, so I don't think I'd got there in time anyway. Oh, that poor husband. I suspect he cleans up her mess very often. The fourth story. Some lady keeps trying to schedule me for a 7.30 a.m. meetings. Last week, some woman messaged me out of the blue with a group text that said, Mandatory 7.30 a.m. meeting, okay? I had a brief moment of, wait, WTF, this is from work, am I getting fired? Before realizing that my very corporate office would A, never schedule a 7.30 a.m. meeting, and B, would never text us to schedule it. So, I responded to her in the group and via private text and said, Hey, you have the wrong number. So, then she calls me and demands to know who I am. I tell her and she eventually agrees that she has the wrong number. But, we're on the phone for some time while I convince her that I'm not the person she is looking for. So then, I forget about it. Until 20 minutes ago, when I get a new message from the same group text that says, Meeting tomorrow, 7.30. To which, I immediately respond. Oh, please take me off this list. I'm not an employee at your company. Two minutes after I sent that, she sends, Gardesh, meeting tomorrow, 7.30 a.m. At this point, I've started thinking that this is one of my friends playing a very elaborate prank on me because this feels like a troll. I give one more attempt and respond. Is this a joke? I've called and texted you to remove me from this group. I don't have any association with your company. You have the wrong number. And 10 minutes later, somebody else in the group responds with, I'll be down. First, who the hell are these people? And why don't they understand how to use text messaging? Second, what in the world is a Gurdish meeting? And third, who is the poor person who's supposed to be at these 7.30 a.m. mandatory meetings? Because they haven't gone to a single one. Well, you can respond with, Meeting has been moved to 6.30 p.m., now mandatory. That will get you removed very quick. The fifth story, I don't work here, let go of me before I punch you. Female 24 UK, work as a carer in the community. Last year in July, I was working a night shift when my mom called to say my dad has been rushed into the hospital with a suspected stroke. I drove to the hospital and was told what ward he was and run there still in my work uniform that was a blue and white tunic dress with black leggings. As I got to the ward, I was in complete panic mode trying to find my dad and had just seen him in Bay 3 and was about to walk up when someone grabbed the top of my arm and yanked me back. I looked up to see the male staff nurse, SN, and it went downhill from there. SN, what the hell do you think you're doing? There's a male in Bay 6 waiting for bloods, a male in Bay 9 waiting to be taken for x-ray. And we have had a call that two people are coming in from a road traffic accident and you're running around with your head up your butt. Me, completely confused. I'm here to visit SN. You're here to bloody work and unless you want me to report you for patient neglect and make sure you're fired before the end of the shift, I suggest you get your act together. Me. Shut your ducking mouth for two seconds. I do not work here, and I'm here to see my father in Bay 3. And if you do not get your hand off of me, I will punch you in your ducking face. At this, SN let go of my arm and looked mortified. I shoved him out of the way and went to see my dad. As I was leaving the ward, SN came and apologized and I politely reminded him that even if I had worked there, that was no way at all to treat the staff. OP, thank you for putting that doofus in his place. The sixth story. Really, I don't work here anymore. About 12 years ago, I worked for a fast food company that had a division just for telephone orders. I was a desk jockey who had to listen to some of the biggest creeps you can imagine and some of the sweetest person as well. Biggest drawback was having to work until 2 a.m., two shifts out of five, where the scheduler was a total power mad knob. If she didn't like you, you 2 a.m. closes were scheduled on your second and fourth shifts with a 9 a.m. that start after each. Otherwise, you were scheduled at 11 a.m. 9 a.m. starts meant that you cleaned the lunchroom and dumped everyone's garbage from their desk. Not a big deal, but finish at 2 a.m. Take the bus home, get some sleep, take a bus back to start at 9 a.m. 
It was pretty rough for some people. I was only getting four hours sleep on those turnaround days. Anyway, seven to eight months in, and I find another job. I give verbal notice to my immediate supervisor. I give written notice to office manager. In my written notice, I detailed my reasons why I was leaving. First was the abuse from the scheduler. Since our office was seven days a week, there was a staff of 80 orders takers. There was no reason to mess with people like Chantel did. I ended the letter explaining that I start a new job on X date and that the Y date is my final date with employer. Five day gap so I can have a small vacation. Last day come, office manager asked me into her office for my exit interview. Things go well. She clarified that I have ended with them five days before I start a new job. I agree, explaining that I'm taking a mini vacation before a new job starts. I handed my swipe card, my work ID, and my key. I get her to sign a receipt that I turned them in and she accepted them. Two days later, I get a call from a shift supervisor. Hi, it's 12 noon, you haven't called in, so where are you? I'm confused by this call. I explained that I quit, my last day was two days ago, I gave notice over two weeks ago to her and management. She acknowledges our conversation but says that she thought I said I was thinking of quitting, not actually quitting. I tell her to talk to Mrs. Manager. Now, I've been burned at other crap jobs before, so when I gave my written notice, I made the manager sign and date a receipt that she received the letter, and again, at the exit interview, she signed and dated a receipt that I turned in everything. Supervisor calls me back, says that manager has no memory of any of this and no letter. I'm on the schedule, and if I don't come in, I am fired. Now, this employer has the habit of doing this to people. Basically, if they can't work you as their slave, they make sure you're not eligible to apply for benefits. My mom used to date a lawyer, so I go to see him, lay it out for him, including my signed receipts, and ask for advice as I'm worried they're going to mess up my new job. Apparently, he's already heard about this employer through the grapevine. He says that he'll take care of it. I go home and find three messages from that manager telling me that I'm a liar, I never gave the notice, I still have my card and key, etc. I called the lawyer, played it all for him, he sends someone over to record the messages. Supervisor calls two days later at 9am asking if I'm coming in for this shift. Nope, I don't work here, I quit, remember? Three hours later, supervisor calls again. She apologized for bothering me when I no longer work there. Apparently, the lawyer went himself with a sheriff's deputy to deliver the letter. That interview started with showing her the receipts that she signed for and accepted my letter of resignation and my card, keys, etc. She agreed that she signed these, she went through her desk and produced the card, keys, etc. Since these were supposed to be turned into the admin staff, a deputy tells her he's going to arrest her for theft. Lawyer then plays the voicemail recordings. Lawyer is threatening to charge her with harassment. Owner showed up for a side visit that morning and came to see why there was a sheriff's vehicle out front. Lawyer explains everything, not just my case. Turns out it took the lawyer two days as he was pulling everything he could find about this office and this manager. Owner had no idea it was this bad. Places like this have a high turnover anyway, so he never thought there was anything weird about the seemingly revolving door. I finished the call with the supervisor, okay, so we are agreed, I don't work here, right, and then I quit. Well, very smart of you, people should follow your example of getting everything signed in for pay for when leaving a job, smart call. The seventh story, second time the skincare section of TJ Maxx gets me in trouble. So I love digging around the shelves at TJ Maxx. If you aren't familiar, it's an out-of-season and overstock store that sells expensive brands for a huge discounts. Their skincare shelves are to die for. And you can often find neat things there, but it's super unorganized and all over the place. There aren't rows of products, mostly just random boxes and bottles on the shelves all mixed together. Well, I go so much, I started this thing where once I look at a box and read the ingredients and stuff, I put it back in an organized way. I have spent over an hour in a 4x4 four four feet section of this store in the past. Well, I'm doing my thing, and I admit, it looked like I was organizing the shelves. And the employees do wear nice clothes, but not a uniform. And this older lady comes over to me. We'll call her Bev. Bev. Excuse me, can you help me read this small print? I cannot read it without my glasses. 
She shoves a night mask in a tub into my hands. I think she's just asking for help. I read it to her. Bev. Well, that's not what I want. Do you have anything to help with the under eye? Now it's dawn on me that she thinks I work there. But I'm awkward and I just went with it. At this point, I knew most of the products on the shelf and I helped her pick out a couple of things. I'm 28, not quite to the point of using anti-aging things, but she was much older and really looking for some heavy-duty stuff. I remembered a much older and beautiful woman from my old work swearing by Estee Lauder skin stuff, so I recommended a couple of things I saw it to her. She was very thankful but fairly high maintenance. I probably spent a good 20 minutes with her before she said thank you and took her bundle to a different section of the store. I was running late at this point, so I gave up on the skincare, grabbed my new hair dryer off the ground where I left it to browse, and went to the checkout. About two people behind me, Bev gets in line and glances at me, and then does a double take with a super wide eyes. Bev, oh, I'm so sorry, I thought you worked here earlier. I just laughed. Nah, but that's okay. I spent enough time in the skincare section. I hope you like the creams we picked out. It wasn't a negative or a Karen exchange, just a case of I don't work your lady. Well, you did a kind thing for someone who sounded like she appreciated. Kindness tend to spread. Sounds like a winning to me. That's it for today, fellow humans. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys next time. <laughs>